In this video, we're going to be covering pixel density and its relationship to texture resolution. So in this scene, we have two spheres. One sphere has an 8K texture map applied, and the other sphere has six 2K texture maps applied to it using a multi-tile UV workflow. And just by looking at the two, I would venture to guess that you would assume that the sphere on the left uh, that looks a little bit more clear uh, would be the 8K texture map. But that would be incorrect. Um, and that is essentially the, the point of this video, is illustrating the point that you can get far more resolution uh, for your textures using a multi-tile UV workflow as opposed to just jacking up the file size to an 8K map, 16K, 32K map. And so before we begin, let's touch on two things. So first, what is pixel density? Pixel density uh, is the measurement of the resolution of a texture. Um, as it can be viewed on a, a screen or monitor. Much like uh, the image sensor of a camera, the more densely packed the pixel count per arbitrary unit of measurement, like say centimeter or inch, uh, the higher the resolution will be. And so what that means is uh, essentially the, the more pixels you can pack into uh, your texture and, and the way that your texture is being viewed, then obviously the higher resolution it's going to have. And then that's where the multi-tile workflow comes in. And uh, the best way that I can explain multi-tile is uh, to just go ahead and open up the UV editor uh, and I can, I can break it down. So I like to use UV Deluxe. Uh, you can get it at creativecrash.com. It's a, a free mel script. And it has a, a number of useful tools. Um, first of all being uh, pixel density and ratio and then you can uh, move your swatches up and down, left and right. Um, so basically, what a multi-tile UV texture workflow is, is say this sphere here, these two spheres have the exact same topology, but the sphere on the right has a traditional single swatch UV tile placement. And right away, you can see that there's probably a good 40% of this one-to-one -one tile swatch that is being completely wasted. Um, traditionally, when using this type of UVs, you try and pack everything into one-to-one -one space as, as tightly and as efficiently as you can, but in, invariably there's going to be wasted space. Now, a multi-tile UV workflow would be taking all of these uh, UVs and breaking them apart and extending them across multiple UV one-to-one -one tiles. The 8K sphere has 360 pixels per centimeter and the 2K swatches have 350 pixels per centimeter but there are six of them and so technically that ends up being six times the resolution than the 8K map. Even though that 8K map is huge, um, it still only has 360 pixels per centimeter. Um, and the reason it has that is because that is the pixel density that will allow it to fit within one one-to-one -one UV tile swatch. Whereas when you break it apart, you're maximizing that entire one-to-one -one space and, in, a, in effect, multiplying uh, the avail available pixel density uh, by a factor of six uh, when you break it out into six tiles. And so you can see this very clearly in the texture itself. If I zoom in on this 8K texture, uh, it completely breaks down when you get to a macro level. And this is uh, unacceptable when you're doing uh, any type of macro shot or hero shot. Um, you want to have the most resolution possible. Whereas if I just scroll over to the left, you'll see that at the same level where this texture starts to break down, this texture still has 100% clarity. And in fact, I can, I can zoom in even closer before it gets to the point where it starts to get fuzzy. So 
six times the resolution, six times the pixel density. Um, it's it's basically the proof is in the pudding. You can see it right here. Um, it's amazing. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these exact same spheres and I'm going to attach uh, displacements and normals to the shaders and you'll see even even more so uh, that similarly the way that the texture holds up on the multi-tile UV workflow and degrades on the single swatch 8K, when you apply displacement this gets exaggerated uh, by a large amount and so all of you guys out there painting and sculpting and uh, making these insane ZBrush mud box you know sculpts um, if you're not using uh, an efficient pixel density and resolution workflow you're wasting so much of that fine detail that you're sculpting in so let me go ahead and open that other scene and uh, we'll take a look okay so here we are um, in the scene with the displacement um, same spheres and we're gonna go ahead and render uh, so that you can see the uh, difference in the displacement versus the multi-tile UV workflow and the traditional uh, large texture map. Okay, and here we are at uh, a little bit more of a zoomed in macro level and you'll see on the left all of our displacement remains completely crisp and tight and in fact you can see actually more higher frequency uh, displacement whereas on the single swatch you'll see that it starts to get uh, a little soft, uh, a little blurry, um, definitely not as crisp and definitely uh, not as much uh, high frequency detail. So for all of you ZBrush guys and Mudbox guys, uh, I think you can see clearly that uh, the multi-tile workflow will really bring out all of that high frequency, uh, just really, really great detail that you've put into your models. Um, which you may not be uh, taking full advantage of um, using the old uh, single tile UV method. Okay, and um, so again, like I said, um, some of these uh, seams and things um, are just because uh, this is just an automatic UV mapping uh, and a generic uh, displacement tileable texture. Um, these sorts of things won't be in your renders uh, just because they're multi-tile. It just, uh, they happen to be there um, because this is just a quick example that I could set up. But uh, again, as you can see, uh, higher resolution, higher frequency, cleaner, crisper, sharper. And so just a couple of caveats uh, to bring up about this multi-tile texture workflow is that um, it is true that with each tile that you add, you're multiplying your resolution and pixel density. So if you take uh, something that was once a single tile uh, and then break it out across four tiles, you'll be getting four times the density. Break it out across six, you'll be getting six times the density, so on and so forth. Um, but you will reach a point of diminishing returns uh, if you start to go crazy and do, uh, you know, 30, 40 tiles um, because the shader networks that you have to make uh, for these multi-tile workflows are definitely more um, time-consuming and detail-oriented. Um, and let me show you what I mean. So if I go ahead and map this shader network, you can see that there are six displacement tiles, or I'm sorry, this was uh, six uh, tangent space normals, and then six displacements. And you have to daisy chain each one uh, along the line and pump that into the appropriate uh, inputs on your shader. So obviously the normals going into your bump, the displacement going into your displacement onto the shader group. Um, but setting up these shading networks uh, definitely, you know, it, it takes time and uh, you can easily um, uh, miss a setting along the way and then you have to do a little bit of debugging. 
but in the end result, if you keep your multiple UV tile swatches to anywhere between four and eight, I find is uh, a reasonable amount of uh, extra tiles um, to have to create these types of shading networks because the amount of resolution that you get uh, is just, it's, it's exponential and it uh, can be life-saving especially on a hero and macro shot and when you have all that extra information and detail there especially for a ZBrush or a Mudbox Sculpt it's it's almost insane to not use a multi-tile UV texture workflow because you're losing out on all that resolution on all that fine detail um, so again like I said keep in mind there is a point of diminishing returns uh, because the shading networks are more complicated um, but it's worth it. And one last thing uh, to point out about multi-tile workflows, especially if you're using ZBrush, is that ZBrush and the way that it kicks out its uh, multi-map uh, exporter, the way that you use that to get your displacement maps and normal maps, it wants things to stay in a horizontal alignment. If you start adding uh, UV tiles up, um, it does not like it and it will error and possibly crash. So again, bringing back up the point of if you're keeping your multi-tiles to uh, increments of 4 or 8 or you know up to 10, you can go up to 10 horizontally and uh, ZBrush will be just fine. But uh, you'll sometimes come across um, scenes or objects that have multi-tile UV patches that go vertically as well as horizontally and those are usually for programs like Mari and things like that. Um, so again just keep in mind if you're using a multi-tile workflow with ZBrush uh, you want to keep your multiple UV tiles in a horizontal alignment. But uh, there you go. Uh, pixel density and its relationship to texture resolution um, the results are exponential and as well they will render um, a, a little bit faster. Um, the amount of memory and RAM it takes to load uh, say an 8K, 16, 32K texture, um, it, it takes a heck of a lot more uh, computing power and, and memory usage to load those textures especially over a network in a, a, a large production pipeline uh, versus many uh, smaller uh, UV textures to say like a 2K. I usually go with a multi-tile workflow um, in increments of 2K or up to 4K uh, textures. Um, never really going above uh, 8K um, unless you're working on IMAX. <laughs> the amount of time that it's going to spend computing um, is is just not going to be worth it. But if you keep it down to a 2K, 4K level, you will find that um, because the RAM can cache that uh, image texture much faster than the larger file, you can see increases in speed of render time um, anywhere up to about, about 15 to 20 percent, I found. And then if you also include um, uh, mip-mapped textures, um, you can see those 10 and 15 percent speed increases go up to anywhere between 20 and 25 percent. So again, um, it's, it seems like a no-brainer to me. Uh, exponential, higher resolution, faster render time, multi-tile UV textures, and uh, pixel ratio discipline, uh, it's just the way to go. So there you go.